This is such a crazy thing. When I see this character, it hurts. It hurts. Me. That's your problem, not mine. Huh? Uh, Swarte Piet is the servant of Saint uh, Nicholas. Uh, it's a saint that's. Uh, uh, whose uh, good deeds are being remembered on the 5th of uh, December. It does look like Swart Piet is kind of a slave of Sinterklaas. That is actually how we see a servant, or how in those 18th, 17th centuries uh, they uh, used him as a servant. It's a, it's a tradition here in Holland for years and years and years, and uh, I don't. There is nothing uh, racist uh, in the story with Swart Piet. So, well, if you want, you can see it, but if you, uh, I think that that's uh, there's nothing really uh, going on uh, on that on that uh, point of the story. Piet was a clean person, I think it shouldn't be difficult to ask a black people without paint, why should you paint him, he's already black, and ask him, be Swarte Piet. Big white man with a long beard and uh, with a big book knowing everything about the little children, you know? Yes, uh, an authority and uh, uh, his, his top, uh, top, uh, top one priority is children. He's a holy man uh, from uh, the direction of the church. Swart Piet is uh, funny, nice and uh, uh, acrobatic. He's an active guy, uh, he does a lot, uh, uh, he is an uh, athlete and uh, yeah, uh, he likes to uh, play with uh, children and he's a hard worker. He uh, isn't able to use many words, but is, uh, is very willing to please everyone. People need arguments to feel free and to be able to do what they are doing. Just because of the gymnast and not because of the, the, the skin color. Because he always had to go through the chimney, you know, to, uh, to leave the presence behind. So we're not talking about the Negro or whatever it is. According to the Dutch, he is just uh, somebody who got black because
because he had to go through the chimney to bring the gifts to the children. But I wonder if a white person goes through the chimney, uh, how they come out with a thick uh, African lips, uh, African hair, and talking like an African, uh, at least the way they think an African should talk. He is black, but he is Moorish. And there's a difference between the Moors and the Negroes. It's the adventures of three um, dick black shining little niggers on the road by Mr. Pete Brose. And on this page you see here that one of those niggers is uh, reading the newspaper and he has an ad that asks for three uh, strong uh, servants asked for a journey to the Netherlands by St. Nicholas personally uh, come to the St. Nicholas Island. Um, it's urgent. Here on this page you see how St. Nicholas has taken them to become Zwarte Piet and become his servant. So this is the proof that uh, Black Peters are actually from Niggerland and Niggerland is Africa. <laughs> I have examples of uh, uh, Dutch white friends of my children who were afraid of black people, you know, real black people. They associate black people with a real dark skin. They associate them with uh, this Zwarte Piet. In the Middle Ages, black figures were uh, supposed to be the devil, uh, and maybe the uh, devil was also a servant of, of Sinterklaas. They were bogeymen to frighten uh, children. In the 14th and 15th century, it was the rep representation of the devil. But if they think that we still think that they are the devil, then they should be much more civilized. First he had like helpers that were supposed to be the devil, the devil, the evil that he had, uh, um, uh, how you say, that he had conquered. So what's quite interesting is that the helpers of uh, St. Nicholas, who used to be first uh, the perceptions of the devil, the Drus, uh, because the devil was also of course in their perception a black, the African, the heathen, it became the, because of, I think, slavery and colonialism, it became the black servant. It looks like um, the, the, the way the slaves were being portrayed uh, as dumb, as joyful, always laughing and making jokes, uh, but uh, with little intelligence. <laughs>